Hey, what's up guys? Kai here, and welcome to the final episode of Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2 Silmeria. And what better way to start things off than with some good wholesome tentacle action. Yeah, buddy. And I want to fight this enemy because it has a particular item that I'm trying to get. And you can meet up with it by engaging the crawling monsters here on the second floor of the dungeon. But this is a rare battle, so it might take a little while before you run into this monster. Unlike an anime where all you have to do is be a schoolgirl walking home late at night, alone and unsuspecting, and then voila, instant tentacle monster. So the item I want to get actually comes from one of its tentacles, so I am just going to use Freya and spam Crimson Strike from the flank. But you can use any character that you want to. Just be sure to bring Giant Killer and Unholy Purifier with you. No, we didn't get it, so what I want to do now is let him regenerate. There we go. And now we're going to try this again. Nope, didn't get it. Oh well. I hope you're pleased with yourself. But that's okay because I already took the time off screen to acquire the item I'm looking for, and that item is called the incense. It gives you Demon Destroyer, which is gonna be very useful very soon. And it's a high quality scented wood. Its soothing effects are said to relieve stress. Well, Better than a wooden pickle, I suppose, but all right. Since we're in the area, let's take a look at that doghouse that we passed up earlier. Wonder why it's on an altar like that. Hmm. Maybe it's a shrine or something, I don't know. Oh God, it's possessed. I need an old priest and a young priest. Oh, hey, Lazard, what's up? Love slave, huh? I don't think that's how it works, dude. No wonder you're single. It's not how you court a lady. You can't just walk up to a female and say, hey, be my love slave. And even so, what about Leneth, you two-timing dog? Why are you running away from me? Stop it, you cowardly dog. Maybe we should call you Courage instead. Alright, got him. Easy enough. He only has 100,000 HP. I do like how the final kobold battle is against Lazard though, just like how the final battle in the main game was also against Lazard. It's a nice touch. Then again, these kobold series battles do follow the same sequence of events as the scenes in the main game, so hmm. Well, that's it, guys. Ah, oh, man. It was a good run, but it is over. I hope you enjoyed Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2 as much as I enjoyed making it. I will be taking a week or two off before starting my next project. No, just kidding, guys. <laughs> it's not over. But that is the last that we're going to be seeing of the Kobold crew here. What the? <laughs> Yo, Rufus, it's not cool to shoot people in the nipples. Come on, man. Anyways, for putting up with all of these kobold theatrics, we get their fleas. Thanks, game. Thanks a whole lot. 
Yep, just like uh, shooting people in the dick. You just don't do it. It's not cool. It's not cool, Rufus. But anyways, take a quick look at that item there. Tiny bugs. Part of the damage inflicted on the enemy is transferred into HP, just like the drain wing and a million other accessories that we have. Cute, tiny, blood-sucking bugs. They bounce around so alive and happy. Wow, they really did give us their fleas. You know, for putting up with those battles, it would have been nice if the reward we got was maybe not useful, but at least something unique or different that we haven't seen before. But oh well, that's everything we can do here. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the lobby, rearrange my setup, and then I will just meet you back down at the bottom of the fifth floor after I release a few of my Einherjar. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, we're back, and on the way to the lobby, I realized I should probably show you the equipment I'm going to be giving my Einherjar before I release them, because I am going to be going with the most optimal setup here. And if you don't care about that, and all you want to do is increase your damage as much as possible, then you can just give them the weapons that you see here, and you'll be good to go. Now if you do care about getting the most out of releasing your Einherjar, then you're going to want to give everybody Red Boots, Wind Glove, and Ether Crown. For archers and mages, you want to give them Sylphen Robes. Heavy warriors get Conqueror's Armor, and light warriors get Infinite Admiration. Don't worry, I will be going over perfect release setups in a bonus episode in the very near future, but for right now this is just going to be a very brief rundown. For mages, if you... well, technically there is a better weapon for them than the Wand of the Apocalypse, we just don't have it yet. So because of that, I'm not going to be releasing any mages right now, and I'm only going to be releasing three of my archers because I only have three sylphen robes. When I get more in the future, I'll be releasing the other two. Now, one last word of advice, or word of caution rather, and this might be obvious, but just in case it wasn't, the item limit in this game is 99, and if you release a heavy warrior with a tear thing, or a mage with Wand of the Apocalypse, then you are going to get either 99 Fencer's Familiarities or 99 Sorcerer Savvies. And you want to make sure you spend those right away before releasing another character, otherwise you will just flat out miss out on those items because you can only carry 99, so don't do that. Obviously I am not going to be doing this, <laughs> I just reloaded my save file from a little bit earlier. But yeah, make sure you uh, release them one at a time. Now for the other dilemma. I feel like rele releasing on Harry Art and giving all of the stat boosting items to a multitude of characters or dividing them among characters evenly is not the best idea. I think it is much more efficient and you're much better off just focusing on one character and making them godlike. But here's the question of the day. Who should I give all of the items to? Leneth is a really good choice because technically speaking she is the best damage dealer in the game because she can equip the Erendite Sword and that frees up a very precious accessory slot. The thing is, to get her to that point, you have to pump about five to 600 golden eggs into her. <laughs> and as I said earlier, I am not about to sit here and farm that many golden eggs. Screw that noise. So sorry Leneth, you're out. Dylan is also a really good choice because he is a monster and he can equip the white loincloth which is also really good for him. And as you've already seen he's capable of dealing millions of damage per hit. That being said, for this playthrough I am actually going to be giving all of my stat boosting items to Freya because she is a beast of a different kind altogether and I just like her, she's one of my favorite characters, so there is that. So when we come back in just a few seconds, I will meet you down on the bottom of the fifth floor, as I said I would earlier, and we will see the fruits of our labors. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, we're back and we are disgustingly overpowered. This is obscene, but it only gets better from here on out and I love it. So real quick here, let's take a look at my setup. I'm going to be using the exact same seal stones from the last episode, nothing changed. For my equipment, I'm going to be going with Bone Mask, Dragon Rib, Magic Dragon Horn because the boss we're about to fight is a god, and the Incense because the boss is also a demon. And that frees up a lot of CP. 
So I'm going to be going with Magician Slayer, because it is also a Magician. Fist of Iron, Solitary Struggle, and True Scene, because I have nothing else better to give her, so why not? For attacks, going to be going with Heavenly Punishment and Victory Sword. Got Lenneth in the party as well. Gave her Toughness, Free Item, and Solitary Struggle. So, alright, let's continue onwards. Ah, look at that gate. That must be the Seraphic Gate, judging by those wings. Wonder what's waiting for us on the other side. Better not be an Angel of Death. Damn it! Yo lady, what's up with your hair? No, not quite. We came here on our own accord, actually. Oh really? That's it? Hmm, I don't know. Every time the enemy says, hey, I'll give you treasure or land if you join me, it doesn't work out too well for you. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Dragon Warrior 1. who dare defy me. Death shall be your reward. Oh, I love this boss music. One of the best boss musics in RPGs, period. I don't care what anyone says. So, alright guys, this is the Ethereal Queen. This is the lady that Gabrielle referred to earlier. And she dwarfs him in power. So if you had a hard time going up against him, you are in for one hell of a battle of attrition here. She is no joke. But with that being said, let's get a Might Potion going on Freya. Oh, Ethereal Queen. Another one of the super bosses that Triace puts in pretty much all of their games. Oh, you would block that, wouldn't you? It's okay, we're good, we're good. What's the matter? One exploit you can use against her is as long as you break her weapon or her wing, then at the start of the next round, she'll automatically regenerate it. And that counts as her taking an action. So you could break a body part and then have your other character use a charge break to refill your AP, switch back, attack her again, as long as you make sure you break a body part, you can repeat the process over and over and over again, and you'll never take any damage, and she'll eventually just fall over. But she does have 1.2 million HP, so it might take a little while. You have defeated me. You ah, have payback for all those years of torment you put me through. Yeah, she is no match for Freya. Of course, I could have brought Dylan down here and just one-shot her because she only has 1.2 million HP. But there you go. Your corpses shall feed the ravens. Life is wasted on you. But for defeating her, as you saw, we got the Holy Wand of Telos, best weapon in the game for mages, and it allows you to use her Soul Crush, which I believe is called. Oh gosh. I'm having an aneurysm right now. Can't think of it. It's not Pale Flare. I'll show you guys in a second. Phantom Destruction? Is that what it is? Aw oh, yeah, dad ass.
the one, like Neo, or Jet Li. So that line actually confuses me. It's still a mystery because... Oh yeah, by the way, Valkyrie joins the party. Hooray! See, in all of the games that Ethereal Queen and Gabriel Celeste appear in, they only ever directly refer to one another. So the fact that she calls out somebody the one, or by the one, I have to wonder who she's referring to. It's not Gabrielle, because the way she's talking here, this person is stronger than Ethereal Queen, and Gabrielle is obviously not stronger than Ethereal Queen. So I wonder who that could be. Hmm. Well, let's go back to the lobby. Maybe we should just recollect our thoughts. Oh, by the way... Yeah, 1800 magic, 30 defense, 80 magic resist. It does make you weak to every element, but we don't really care about that. Okay, Phantom Destruction, that's what it's called. It uh, increases the heat gauge by 64%, which I believe is just shy of being able to use it in the third position in a combo. But I could be wrong, I honestly never use this item because uh, the Soul Crush is like Light Elemental or Holy Elemental. But generally I don't even use mages anymore, so whatever. But that is the item you want to give your mages when releasing them. But, uh, oh, real quick, I'm going to take a second to save my game, and then we will do the next thing on our agenda. So, be right back. Alright, guys, we're back, and to get ready for the next thing I want to do, I went ahead and put Chasm Wrath on the dais. And I want to make a few quick changes to my setup. We're going to get rid of True Scene, and give Freya Adversity instead. And she no longer needs the incense, so we are just going to boost her attack power. There we go. And we should be all set and ready to go. Now that we've cleared the dungeon, let's go back to our guide and tell her of our progress. Why, thank you. I don't know, last time you said you wanted to have a rematch with us, we agreed and you backed out. Sure, why not? Oh, you will fight us, okay. How hard could she possibly be? Alright guys, it's final, final boss time against Derna Hamilton and her Demi Shadows. Believe it or not, she is actually stronger than the Ethereal Queen, and this is the only person that I can think of that would be the one. She also absorbs fire elemental attacks, so watch out for that. But we are seriously outnumbered here, but that's where adversity will come into play. Hopefully we won't even need to use a Might Potion here. So we're just going to try to get behind her, and then go in for the kill. And for defeating her, we get an item called the Truth Aid. Wonder if that's the greatest treasure in all the I land. Hope you're with I hope so, for all the crap we had to go through to get it. You mean you didn't realize that the first time we kicked your ass? Well, sure, now that you mention it. Yo, let's go! Well, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna vote for the Path of Least Resistance. Yeah, what do you mean? What did that do? Huh. Well, okay. Before we do that, let's take a look at the Truth Aid. Whatever that is. Ah, there we go. No discernible difference to our stats. Hmm. The official figures are in. A strange accessory with the inscription, Wear this to reveal the hidden truth. Well, let's put it on and see what happens here. Let's go to our status menu. Wow, it really is the greatest treasure in all the land. Wearing this reveals the female character's measurements. Yeah, that is the ultimate prize for clearing the Seraphic Gate. Uh, game. Game, game, game. I am shaking my head at you right now. But yeah, there we go. 
but yet there is one more thing to do still. Let's go back in and see how things are different, shall we? You know, I wonder if that's how Grandfather Doran knew Alice's measurements. Hmm. Well, anyways, this treasure box was in here last time. Inside is the first oracle. Every time you clear the dungeon, you get access to a new oracle. And once you have all ten, you get treated to a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, there is one secret item to get after you beat the Seraphic Gate ten times. Now, I am not going to be doing this on screen, of course. I will be doing it off screen. And I'm going to make a bonus episode showing the locations of all of the oracles, as well as the final reward. But um, besides that, this will wrap up the LP completely. There are no more post-game dungeons or anything like that. The only content I have in store for you guys is some more bonus episodes. I'm going to be doing a Soul Crush exhibition video, including all of the enemy Soul Crushes. I'm going to be doing perfect release guides, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to be doing the Oracle video, or whatever you want to call it. And I also have another special bonus episode planned where we take a look at the alternate epilogue to the game. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the LP. I had a lot of fun making it and playing the game again and being able to share it with you guys. So until next time, have a good day and I'll see you then.